Mr. Chancellor, this time last year, I had the privilege of sitting here with President Zelensky. Um, the United States had told him, maybe you shouldn't leave your country because something might happen. But he came here anyway to say that our fight is your fight, as he did again. Many nations here, with the exception of the US and the UK, did not believe in the intelligence that Vladimir Putin would, in fact, invade. And then three days later, it did. You heard President Zelensky just say, this must be over this year. Do you share that belief that it can and must be? I think this is really a very brutal war. It is the imperialistic approach of uh, Russia to conquer the whole Ukraine still, or big parts of it. And he is doing this with very much furor, with a lot of uh, brutal uh, impact on the soil of the Ukraine. And many people suffer from that, dying men, women, children, and young and old people. And this is what we should know. So this is what we can do now facing the situation, and that is giving the best support we can. And this is why Germany enlarged constantly its capacity of support for the Ukraine. And we did so with the effect that now we can say that Germany is the biggest supplier also of weapons to Ukraine on, in continental Europe, and we will continue to be there. Mm -hmm. But you, in your speech, said we have to be ready for the long haul. I mean, you must strategize. You must think amongst yourselves how long this could last. Do you have a target date? I think it is wise to, to be prepared for a long war. And it is wise to give Putin the message that we are ready to st stay all the time together with Ukraine and that we will con constantly support the country. So it is not really a very good idea that in this conference or at this podium the two of us discuss the question when exactly in which months this war will end. The really important decision we should take all together is saying that uh, we are willing to do it as long as necessary and that we will do our best. Do you believe, do you believe that NATO sorry, the allies will stay united? And do you believe that your people will stay behind you and behind this effort? Yes. First, I'm absolutely sure that Putin never expected that there would be a that united Europe and that there would be a that united world. He never thought that the transatlantic partnership would work that good. But also, he never thought that there would be so much support for Ukraine from many other countries all over the globe. And he never expected that there would be a majority of uh, people voting in the General Assembly saying that this is a war of aggression that could not be accepted. And he never expected that even in the G20 meeting, we had a very strict sentence about this war and the Russian aggression and a absolutely clear sentence that nuclear weapons should not be used in this war. So the unity is someone he never expected and it is our task but also our chance that we stick to it. I'm absolutely um, sure that we will. And looking at the situation in my country, I see that there is a broad support for the strategy and activities of the government. Yes, there are some, and we are a de democratic country that are not that sure whether it is really a good idea to do all these sanctions and to, and, and to deploy all these many weapons to Ukraine. But even the big majority of those is in the end accepting that the government has to take a responsible decision and trust us in doing what we do. And even those who possibly sometimes think we should do something more really understand that it is very good that we stick together, that we never go alone, and that we just do it together with our friends and partners, and especially with the United States. And this is why I'm also sure that we will have the support of our people for the things we are having to do. Um, obviously, one can't put a date on the end. However, it does depend, I suppose, on the amount of 
help that you send and the speed with which you send it. So no point in going over the length of time it took to get the Leopard tanks um, and for you to say that, the sort of choreography between the UK, US and Germany. But now you seem to be in the position of having to persuade all those other countries that were trying to get you to send the leopards or let their leopards to actually send them. Why? <laughs> Tja. There is a question I have to, uh, to ask to others, especially those who were so much uh, urging me to act in a special way. And I will just repeat, the only strategy for being united is never doing something just for your own and to discuss with your friends and partners, and this is what we did. And I'm really appreciating very much the strong alliance with the United States in this case. It is very good that we did a lot and not just the last step together. And I'm sure we will continue to be together in this very difficult case. When will they get there? When will the tanks get there, yours and the others? So we are working, the, the Minister of Defense is here. He's working very hard to make it happen and the industry is doing the same so that we are able to deploy the first Leopard tanks very soon and also with trained soldiers. This is what we already started. And we are doing so also in giving training and, uh, and, and, and support for, for all the maintenance which is necessary and, and, and munition to other parties that will join. And as I learned, many are not able to deliver the most modern tanks which we do. I hope some more will join also in this case. But uh, in the ones they are delivering, we will give the support as well. And as you know, there is uh, also a big number of older tanks which we will deliver. And so this is all together what we can do. It's part of our joint activity. And I'm sure that uh, in the end, the, it has a concrete military effect. But the more, most important effect in this case is that Putin learns that it is a miscalculation if he thinks he can just stick to this course as long as necessary and then we will stop our support. This will not happen. Um, Chancellor, there's also some worrying information or reality about your own and generally NATO's ammunition stockpiles. Secretary General said this week that what used to take 12 or so months to order and produce is now taking 28 months. Is that a worry? I mean, they are using a huge amount of, of, of shells, obviously, but how, how can you continue to prosecute this war if you're running out of ammunition and the production has not yet rumped, ramped up? First, uh, I discuss very often with Jens and also with Boris, uh, the defense minister in, in Germany, and my foreign minister, Annalena, that we have to change the way of dealing with the industry. So in the last years, more and more, we thought that uh, the relation between the public defense department and the industry is something very similar to a company that is buying a car. So there is always a stock of cars, there is a permanent production, there is always what you need for maintenance. The way we did it in the past, in the last 20 years or so, is that we once ordered and we agreed that the production is stopping because we have already bought what we need. So we have to understand that for our security, we have to change the way of dealing this fact. We need a permanent uh, production of the most important weapons we are using. And this is also due to maintenance questions. And this is also due to the question of munition. And uh, so this is what we are learning. But learning it is, means that we are now taking action in case of our own defense capabilities, but also doing it in supporting Ukraine. So you already may have heard that we, though this is a weapon that has not been used and produced for, I think, 20 or 30 years, um, we are now producing again uh, the munition for the Gepard flag tank, which is very essential in defending Ukraine from, uh, air, from, from missiles and other things. And it, it is something which we are starting so that there is a constant supply. We also discuss 
what we can do for achieving the chance that the munition that works with the tanks that are in use in Ukraine, mostly mm -hmm. of Eastern and Russian origin, uh, could also be continued. And there are a lot, and I see them, of our Eastern partners who could be very good partners in creating the production in this case. Okay. So we are willing to do our best that a permanent supply is feasible.